Who are you? Rai Rai. Rai Rai, here we are in Austin, Texas, right? Yeah. Now, I would like you to help me go back to Baltimore. Uh, um, I could take you back. Yeah, can you take me back to Baltimore? <laughs> yes. Right now, it's cold there. <laughs> so, I'm happy to be here because it's warm. But, um, I could take you back with describing my music and, like, how I get down. I is like basically Baltimore club music where it's though like it's crazy beats, hard bass, it's like music that make you dance. Like it's like the best party music when you go in the club you instantly wanna dance when you hear Baltimore club sound. And it's just like um crazy dances, like we have our own way of dancing, like our own unique way and it's like You have the crazy leg. Yes. What is the crazy leg? Can you show me the crazy leg? This quickly there, Rai Rai. <laughs> I gotta try. Hold on, it might be hard to do because my leg messed up right now. Oh god. <laughs> should, I, should I try, Mike? <laughs> no, I can't. I'm scared. Even slow is good. Alright, you set. One, two. And then it's just fast, like just move your legs fast. And it's the crazy legs, but it's different ways of doing it. What about the SpongeBob Rai Rai? There's the SpongeBob too, right? Yes. What's the SpongeBob Rai Rai? Just quickly. <laughs> this, you do this dance like this, then you do it fast, and that's the SpongeBob. <laughs> and there's another one too, the Wu Tang. That's not our dance. We don't do that at home. That's like a Philly dance. So. But you've adopted it somehow, haven't you? Like I've heard the word Wu Tang and Baltimore go together. How does the Wu Tang come part of the Baltimore club sound? Because um, Philly have their own way of making Baltimore club music, but they call it Philly club, and it's like. They similar. They do the dances similar to ours. So when they do the Wu Tang, which is some dance like this, it's similar to a dance that we do. But we don't call ours the Wu Tang. So like, that's just a Philly dance, but it's affiliated because you can do the Wu Tang off of Baltimore club music. It's all like the same in the same rhythm. So. So nowadays we have Baltimore club. But Rai Rai, can you take me back to Drew Hill? What can you tell the people about Drew Hill? They was a um, R&B group. I liked all their music, and um, like Drew Hill. Yeah, they was just like a um, a typical R&B band. Like they dance, they sung. It's like they never really work with Baltimore club music because they was doing R&B. But like Woody, one of the guys, he actually was in the studio with me and Blackstar a few times, like working on his own project and like doing other stuff. But like they was a big group from Baltimore. And right on the front here, who do we have? Cisco. Yes. Now he later on went on to do the his own thing. He just was the thong. The thong song. What do you think about the thong song? I love it. I I just love that beat. Like I thought it was a good song. I always wanted to dance with them. So I'm coming to Baltimore. I get some Old Bay Spice. Go to Cascade Lake. Where else should I check out? Isn't there like a cool wax museum, a black wax museum to check out in Baltimore? Oh yes, it's scary. <laughs> What's in that exactly? The black wax museum. It's like um statues that people like wax together, like um back in the day stuff. So it's like people carved really. Like it's just like basically what ha what used to happen back in the day with like these black people and it's just like a, um it's a ship, like a slave ship and they got like um people in there like chained and stuff. It's crazy and they just like hey, make all these crazy sounds. But they actually throw parties there now. And people be like, Oh, you coming to my party the black swag you there? I say I would never ever go to a party there. Like, no. I went there one time on a school trip in elementary school and I was scared. Like I would never go back there. <laughs> it's crazy. I wouldn't go to a party there. I know I could never imagine Rai Rai getting scared. It really must be scary, eh Rai Rai? Yeah, it's not really scary, but it's just like statue, call figures, like you hear noise like on the slave ship, it's like noise, it's just crazy. Rai Rai, speaking of Baltimore Club, I guess you can put down the Drew Hill record. I would like to ask, or maybe you never want to put it down, I'd like to ask about Baltimore Club. Here's a record, Baltimore Club Classics, Volume 5, it has like DJ Ducky Man on it. What can you tell the people about this record? What do you know about these people that are on here? DJ Techniques. Um, I used to listen to them growing up. Like that was, they was like the most popping people growing up. Like when I was a little girl, like I used to go buy club CDs and most of these producers on here, like Kenny B, like they was like the people that was on the like the um, little CDs I used to buy, like Kenny B, K Swift, Rodley, Techniques. It was just like all their music, which was back in the day. Like so, that was like the music 
that was coming out of Baltimore back in the day. They was the only producers. But now it's like a, a younger generation producing. Like everybody getting into the Baltimore club scene or trying to produce beats or trying to dance. So yeah, like they used to definitely bring the heat when I was little. Well, Rai Rai, here we are in Austin, Texas. Yes. And I've been showing you some records and I have a gift for you. Okay, what is that? I have this special bag right here to give to you. <laughs> uh, uh, some DJ equipment, like speakers. Yes, check it out. This is a gift for you. It's a boombox bag. Really? Do I, <laughs> right, and check this out. And what I was wondering is, do you think you could possibly do a song for us on this? <laughs> yeah, I, I can so. try. Could you do a little dance for us just for a sec? Oh, <laughs> Hold on, it might be hard. Check it out, the boom box. Cause my... I can hold it, I can hold it for you. Uh, Just a little bit for us. You, you, you can put this down. I can try. Your dancing is so amazing, Rai Rai. Uh, my leg messed up right now. But I don't really know how to hold My God, I can't... Ooh. Amazing! Yeah. <laughs> That's actually my first time dancing on my leg in like weeks. Thank you so much for doing that too. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. So what do you think? You think you're gonna use the bag at some of your gigs coming up? Yes. That's cool. That's so funny. <laughs> That's crazy. What was your school like when you go back to school? What did the kids think of you turn with MIA and stuff? Is it like fame? Yeah, it's like they I be in school and it's just like when I'm walking to class, you see like all the boys on the stairwell when they all like, they all trying to imitate my voice and they like shake it to the ground like, and it's just irritating and I just used to run in class like, oh, I can't take this. And I be in class and you can still hear him like, what? Like, <laughs> just trying to imitate my voice. But it be crazy though. Like everybody knew me and they thought it was cool what I was doing. And every time I left, they everybody missed me and stuff. Like, my teachers, they knew too. Like, they was, like, totally up for it. They let me go on tour. Some of them was actually fans of MIA. Like, they were, they knew about her before I even started, like, touring with her. Do your teachers want to go on tour with you? Um, no, one of my teachers asked me to hook him up with MIA. Like, <laughs> so he, he liked her. But I wanted to take one of my teachers on tour with me. Like, I liked her, but she was, like, a um, science teacher. She was a fan of MIA and her friend, like her friends knew of her. But I was like, I wanted her to go on tour. Well, lastly, you're winding up, Rai Rai. Thanks for speaking to me, Nardwar Human Serviette. I really appreciate your time, especially on the bad leg, the dancing again. Amazing. Dante's Fried Chicken. You played a gig at Dante's Fried Chicken. What's that about? Fried Chicken? Dante's Fried Chicken? Yeah, he, he a good cook. Like, his food is amazing. Like, he cooked the best food. Like, he does it, for real. And, um... He actually invited me to a show as well as though he cook and it's like a party and then he like, he film it. Like he interview me like while he cooking, like we help him cook, stuff like that. And he just talked to us while we doing it and then we perform. Which I actually did a tour with Dante Fried Chicken overseas too in Sweden. So like I was with him a lot lately and um, it's just, we perform and then everybody just eat and party. It's crazy. <laughs> you also played a gig at Thugs and Hugs. What was that? Thugs and Hugs, Dante's Fried Chicken, some interesting gigs. <laughs> yeah, I did. A, I don't know. I did a lot of gigs. I mean, maybe because I don't know. He like he hood too, like a little bit. He got the hood up in him, and I guess he just be coming up with different stuff, like different names for parties. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> thugs and hugs. I don't know. Maybe because my music's so thuggish. Like people, he fitted me on like roster, but. Well, thanks so much, Rai Rai. Keep on rocking in the free world and do do the loot do. <laughs> what is that? Almost, Rai Rai. Do do the loot do. <laughs> do ye? <laughs> Almost, kind of. Do do the loot do. <laughs> do do? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that was funny. Well, we say do you. <laughs>